So the homeless guy confirmed that he heard Auntie Gay slurs. Yeah, he was reluctant, but cooperative. But he didn't see the perps. No, but he saw somebody who did. Well, don't keep me in suspense, detective. So there's a third witness, a woman who lives on the block, saw the entire attack from her window, and she described the perps in detail. Then why isn't she here making a statement? Well, um, because from what I gathered, she's agoraphobic, and she hasn't left her apartment in years. Okay. How is she going to get to court to testify? Well, one step at a time, counselor. She heard the perp's names. First and last? Uh, Zach and Mo. OK, that's better than nothing, I suppose. We can run the names through Vicap. Got a hit on a black 4x4 four four with jersey plates. Tell me this is good news. As good as it gets, cars reported stolen two days ago from a garage in Roselle Park. Where's the car now? Recovered an hour ago. It was abandoned eight blocks from where it was stolen. What about the condition of the car? Any evidence? Fast food containers, beer bottles. Great. We can pull prints and DNA. Roselle Park Precinct is going to expedite. They are aware that this could be related to our hate crimes case. We have an even better shortcut. First names, Zach and Mo. Roselle Park's a small suburb. These idiots, it can't be the first time they got in local trouble. So head to Jersey and run their names and descriptions by the precinct cops. And oh, did you find the witness from the bar where they were singing show tunes? Not yet. Well, uh, he may not exist because the woman who saw the whole attack said that Javier was alone. Could be a case of the third man syndrome. Third man syndrome? It's a weird hiccup in the human brain when it's trying to comfort itself in survival situations. So you're saying that he saw someone that wasn't there? It's not too different than an imaginary friend or a guardian angel. Well, pick up the three guys from Roselle Park, because we know that they're not angels. 